The new Genful joysticks arrived, quite a bit faster than I expected, which is nice. Very good service from this company. I'll put a link in the description for where I ordered them from. And a thanks to YouTuber SYN80 for the link. I appreciate it. Well, at first glance, they look like the other Genful joysticks. I'll pop a sensor housing off and take a look. Okay, these do seem to be the new ones with the different magnet design. So good service and the proper item. Excellent. I'll take a closer look at the sensor housing. The PC board is red with black printing and it's labeled L-4B. A few of the sensor PC boards from the Thompson kit had the same label. Let me see what number is on the Hall sensor. I see is labeled 93L43. So this is the same Hall sensor that was in the joysticks that came in the Thompson kit. At least the number on the IC is the same. I will test it to make sure. The joystick on the left is the older Genful and has the rectangular magnet. The joystick on the right is the new one. So a big change in the magnet shape. Looks to be a bit larger magnet as well as a different shape. So that will affect how the magnetic field interacts with the Hall sensor. One other difference in this version of the Genful joystick is the magnet holder. In the previous versions I've tested, the magnet holder is in two pieces, allowing for adjustment. In this version, the magnet holder is one piece. The slightly increased height of the magnet may have forced this change, but with calibration software available now, I don't see that as much of a setback. Let's get right to the important part, how it does in a controller. I'll pull one of the Hall Effect joysticks out of the bag. Here I'm checking to see how well centered the sensor outputs are. I'll hook up 1.8 volts to the joystick sensor and connect the meter to the center pin to measure the output. This is the up-down axis and it's off center by around 50 millivolts. Not bad. This output value will have the effect of pushing the center position down. I'm going to remove the sensor housing from the joystick. Here I want to see if the off center is being caused by the magnet or the hall sensor itself. And most of it is the magnet, but it's close enough to go with. Now I will check the left-right axis. That is really close. And with the magnet away from it, still very close to 900 millivolts. If they were all this close, that would be fantastic. Here is what the pre-replacement numbers look like in the gamepad tester. I don't have any controllers with any bad joysticks at the moment. This one does have the left thumb knob that needs replacing, so I have to pull it apart anyway. This controller had the left joystick replaced with a regular Alps potentiometer joystick a year or so ago. The right stick is the original Alps joystick, so the right one is a good candidate for replacement. This is a BDM-020 motherboard, so this controller is starting to get a bit of age on it. I'll get the joystick soldered in and get the battery hooked back up for testing. Before I put it back together, I will hook it up to the GamePad Tester website and just make sure everything is working. Now that software is available to calibrate the controller, I will do a temporary centering and range calibration. It doesn't take much time and again might be able to spot a problem before the controller is reassembled. Of course after calibration the centering looks great. But the circularity is what I'm mostly interested in at this point. It looks pretty symmetric and that is what I'm looking for. If it was shifted to one axis at this point it would be time to try and adjust the magnet position but this looks good. It's all back together and can see that all the previous calibrations were temporary. Now I will do a permanent calibration. Well, the calibration will be written to the non-volatile memory. Can redo the calibration over and over again. Of course, the centering is great. Now with the calibration software, centering is just not an issue anymore. That circularity looks very good. It's very even. Not the lowest error numbers I've seen, but maybe the most symmetric of all the Hall Effect joysticks I've tried. It is only a sample of one, but a completely random one from the bag of 10. I'm very pleased with that. That is as good as a potentiometer based joystick. Very well done, Genful. I've been working on a new setup to test the Hall Effect sensors. It's still a work in progress, but it's in good enough shape to start using. I believe this will give a bit better data about the Hall sensors than the mechanical setups I was using. I'm hoping with this I can distinguish the propagation delay from the slew time to a better degree. The joystick Hall sensor will go right at the end of the electromagnet and the ferrite core will be positioned to touch the top of the Hall sensor IC. That's the trickiest part as it stands now. 
basically because I don't want to remove the plastic sensor housing from the sensor PC board. So it's kind of hard to line up. Part of the work in progress. For the setup here, the yellow trace, channel 1 of the scope, is the current through the electromagnet. The green trace, channel 2 of the scope, is the output of the Hall sensor. The electromagnet is energized for about 200 milliseconds and then the polarity is reversed and it's energized for another 200 milliseconds. This change in magnetic field will be the equivalent to the joystick moving its full range on an axis. The fall time we'll be looking at here would be the joystick being moved from down to up or from right to left, at least in a DualSense controller. I'm going to use the scope's rise and fall time measurements where I can. It will be more consistent than me using the cursors. The settings for the rise and fall time are set to the 10% to 90% range, but do take into account this is the full range of the joystick. When mounted in the controller, the range is restricted, so I would expect these times to be very close to worst case. And I'm getting right about 41 milliseconds. Say you could move the joystick from the full right position to the full left position in 30 milliseconds. The output from the Hall sensor would not show a full right output for another 11 milliseconds. Of course, moving the joystick from one side to the other in 30 milliseconds, I found to be very difficult. Probably going to take someone with a lot better reflexes than me. Let me expand the horizontal scale, and I will need the cursors for this. What I'm looking for here is how much time does it take from a magnetic field change till the sensor output changes. The propagation delay, so to say. The AX cursor is on the start of the magnetic field change and can see by 400 microseconds later there is a detectable change in the sensor output. That is much faster than I was expecting. I've got the BX cursor set at the end of the magnetic field change so it takes right at 1.7 milliseconds to change the magnetic field here. So that would be like moving the joystick along the entire axis in 1.7 milliseconds. Very fast for a mechanical joystick. Now to the rise time and it's right around 9 milliseconds. The three types of Genful sensors I've tested all have about the same rise time. While these 93L43 sensors have the fastest fall times, they do still have asymmetric timings. Now for the delay time, it's maybe a little slower, but still less than 500 microseconds. So magnetic field change to sensor output change is very fast for these sensors. Rise time for these is far faster than I can move the joystick. Fall time though, I feel is on the edge. These sensor ICs have the same number on them as the ICs in the Thompson kit. They also have the same timings, so I feel good in saying they're the same Hall Effect sensor. So can expect these joysticks to have a very slightly different feel compared to a potentiometer joystick. And I'm quite confident most of that different feel is from this fall time. I believe the combination of the rise and fall times is what gives these joysticks a bit of a smooth feel. These are now my favorite Hall Effect joysticks. They are fast enough. So if Genful could get the fall time down to around 25 milliseconds, that would be great. The symmetry and the error of the circularity is as good or better than a potentiometer based joystick. The new magnet design seems to be doing a great job here. Now if you need the fastest response time possible, then probably should just stick with a potentiometer based joystick and plan on having to replace them every so often. I've only used this one a few days, but it feels just like the joysticks that came in the Thompson and GG Zone kits. It just has a lot better circularity than the Thompson kit, and it's faster than the joysticks in the GG Zone kit. It's kind of the best of both those kits combined. I actually prefer the feel of these over the regular potentiometer joysticks. It's subtle, but there is just a tiny bit more smoothness to them. And there is. The timing's buried out. The output of the Hall sensor is basically filtered just a bit. I suspect there will be future revisions of these, but if your joystick needs replacing now, give these a shot. They're the best all-around Hall Effect joysticks I've tried. They're not perfect, but very good. Thank you for watching.